How is everyone doing? Welcome to today's lesson. Welcome to learn English with Abiatal. And please never forget that good English promotes effective communication. So in everything that you say, all right, make sure that you send a correct message because a wrong message will cause confusion and misinterpretation of what you would like to say. Well, today we are looking at a narrative essay. And in this lesson, we are going to look at these main topics. The first is, what is a narrative essay? Followed by the elements of a narrative essay. We will also look at some examples of narrative topics, the structure of a narrative essay, and how to plan a narrative essay. So please make sure that you watch this lesson until the end, because by the end of this lesson, I am sure you are going to write beautiful stories, beautiful narrative essays. So don't lose out, don't miss out, keep watching. Before we move on, we want to look at what is to narrate. To narrate is to tell a story. Whenever you tell your young sister a story, you are narrating. Whenever you listen to a story from your grandmother, your grandmother is narrating. The story can be fiction, meaning that it is not true, or non-fiction, meaning that it is true. Now you know what to narrate is. Let us look at what is a narrative essay. This is a way of testing your ability to tell a story in a clear and interesting way. To narrate is to tell a story. So a narrative essay is a writing that requires you to tell a story in a clear and interesting way. That is so clear. Now let us look at the elements of a narrative essay. Your narrative essay should consist or contain of a setting, the characters, a plot, point of view, a theme, the conflict, and style. We are going to look at some of this and we'll start with the setting. In a narrative essay, the setting is the place and time. Where is your story taking place? When was that? For example, you may want to say, it was on a bright summer morning in the middle of a large grassy park where happy families were. Then you add your story. In this case, a bright summer morning tell us the time. And in the middle of a large grassy park tells us the place. You do not necessarily need to say it was 8 o'clock in the morning on the 25th of December. You are not wrong to say that, but it's so clumsy. It's too much. It sounds better when you narrate giving your introduction including the place and time that way. It was a horrific dark night. Thunder and lightning were, maybe you are talking about the scariest night of your life. So you see, be creative and write as beautiful as you can. The setting can be very on anything. Are you talking about the beautiful place you have visited? Are you talking about your first day watching the sunset on the beach? The setting has to be there so that your story is interesting. Are you writing about the night you saw a ghost by the graveside? You know, sometimes you are told not to move around at night, especially boys. And that day, the ghost decided to visit you. So the setting can be on anything. This is where the story is taking place. Did it take place at the village when you were harvesting millet? 
Was it at the ocean? Is it in the boat? Is it in a moving vehicle? Is it in a city? In someone's house, single room, an entire planet? The best thing to know now is that the setting is the place and time. And it can be anywhere. We also need to know the character. A character is a person, animal, a being, creature, or thing in the story. Is your story about the hyenas? Is it about a witch? Is it about the talking trees? Is the story about you yourself? So any of these can be a character. The writers use characters to perform the actions and speak dialogue, moving the story along. Now, if the story doesn't have characters, that means there is no story. We are moving on to the plot as an element of a narrative essay. The plot is the storyline. This is how the events unfold, one after the other. How is your story going on? This means that your story should have an exposition. This is the beginning of the story where characters and setting are introduced. Then your story should have rising action where the main character faces a series of conflict. Then up there you reach the climax. <laughs> I don't know what goes through your mind when you think about climax, but here we are talking about the most exciting part of the story, when we learn the outcome. After that, we move on to the falling action, whereby the events leading to the end of the story take place. Then we have a resolution, which is the end of the story. If you write your narrative essay this way, then you are likely to score beautiful marks. Your narrative essay also needs to have a point of view. This is the writer's way of deciding who is telling the story and to whom. Is your story written in the first person? At your level, most of the narrative essays are personally related meaning that they're about you. When I talk about the day I'll never forget, that is about me, and I am going to use the first person. I, we, us. I was so scared. We were running. The thief caught us. You are included in the story. A story can also be written in a second person, you, and a third person, he, his, she, her, they, them, their, can be used. The other element of a narrative essay is the theme. This is the main idea or underlying meaning a writer explores in a novel, short story, or other literary work. Here we are talking about your narrative writing. So what idea is your writing? Although your writing may not satisfy all the elements of a narrative essay, you must at least try to understand them and write as beautiful as possible so that you get good marks. Now let us look at the topics that you can narrate on. Topics such as how I lost my best friend, my first trip abroad, the day I will never forget, the time I got into big trouble, how I felt after failing English, and the topics which requires you to start or end by saying, I could not believe my eyes. These are all narrative essays. You may choose one and write a good narrative essay. 
This will help you to test if you have understood the way of writing. I am personally going to plan an essay on my first day at school. So the structure of a narrative essay includes the introduction, the body, and the conclusion. In my introduction, I'll talk about when, where, and what happened in short, because I have to remember that there is need for setting. People should know where my story is taking place or where my story is took place anyway your setting can come anywhere else in the story but it's more professional and easy to put your setting right at the beginning it becomes so clear and when you are writing a narrative essay it might be in the exam and you may forget to include the setting so bringing it out right at the beginning may just make it easy for you to write and it will save you from forgetting about telling the readers where the story is or was taking place. After my introduction, which is the first paragraph, I will now move on to the body. We have already spoken about topic sentences, so we are all aware that our body or the body of our narrative essay, just like any other essay, has to be made up of different topic sentences. These are different main ideas. In my case, on the topic, my first day at school, when I'm done with paragraph one, I am now moving on to paragraph two, which is part of the body. And in the second paragraph, I want to talk about how I felt, how I felt that day at school. Feelings have to do with emotions. In my case, I was worried because I didn't know anybody. I was actually frightened. So how about you? Were you frightened? Were you happy? Tell us about that. Meaning in that paragraph, we as readers only need to see how you felt. That is your main idea of that paragraph. And do not forget that that main idea has to be supported by supporting sentences. When I am done with paragraph 2, I will now move on to paragraph 3, where I'll discuss my experience. I'll tell you how I was bullied, or how I made friends, or how I lost a shoe. If you were bullied, tell us. If you made friends, Tell us, who are they? So choose one of those experiences and explain them. If you choose many, make sure that you expand all of them. I personally lost a shoe on my first day at school. So I had to spend a whole lot of time looking for my shoe everywhere. I was crying. I even went to check in people, other learners' bags. And I got caught. People thought I was stealing. This is when I was taken to the office of the principal and this is where I explained that I was looking for my shoe. So this is how the others realized that I was not a thief. So what was your experience, you? I won't mix up my paragraphs because I am now taught that each paragraph need a topic sentence, which is a main idea. I'll then move on to the next paragraph where I'll tell you what I enjoyed. So you must also tell us what you enjoyed or what you did not enjoy on your first day at school. Was it the lesson? Was there any lesson that you really enjoyed and you loved it? Was it your lunchbox? Was it the break time? Tell us, and in that paragraph, we should only hear about what you enjoyed. Because now you know that each paragraph must only talk about one main idea. This is so clear, and I am loving you guys because you are listening attentively. Now you are done with your fourth paragraph. 
you can move on to the conclusion because so far you have four paragraphs. What a good learner. In your conclusion, you just need to sum up your main ideas. This is where I always remind you to make use of synonyms so that you do not repeat what you have said, although you are repeating it, but in a clever way. Isn't this so clear now? So how about picking one topic from those topics and write a beautiful narrative essay about those topics? Don't forget to plan your essay. You can always use a spider diagram like how we discussed in previous lessons or the linear method and please make sure that you do not send a wrong message. When you write good English, you promote effective communication. So please avoid sending a wrong message. Do not forget to subscribe for the next lesson. And thank you so much for paying attention and being part of this lesson. See you in the next lesson. Bye.